what you're gonna do. You can't fight the future. Wrestling God. ProWrestlingRadio.com presents. Are you talking to me? Pro Wrestling Radio. Live. Online. You think The Rock actually cares? What is he doing here? Oh, it's true. I'm bringing everybody with me. The Russell. That's hard time. That be the man. Call in with a question or comment. Six, one, can you feel it? I hate your ever. Hold oh, the damn soul. Call for each at 1 877 800 8834. That's how I roll. You're six at the big day. Come get some because I've done all of that. And now your host of the show. The king is back on his throne. Eric. Gargiulo. And that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. My name is Eric Gargiulo, and again, we are live in the WBCB studios in Levittown, Pennsylvania. Now, for the majority of the show today, I'm going to get to finally that interview with former WWE Intercontinental Champion Chris Jericho. You may hear me refer to him as a current champion during this interview, and that is because this interview was taped two weeks ago. You wouldn't have to worry about something like that 15 years ago, but today anything could change, and it could change as quick as tomorrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to get to that interview momentarily, then time remaining throughout the show I'll, I'll take some phone calls if i can if not i'm going to try and play as much of this as i possibly can and i'll make some comments before we go into break i'll talk a little bit more when we come out of the break about some things coming up here on the show and a little more of that so without further ado now i'm jumping right into the middle of a question with chris here i was asking chris about his performance with the band fozzy he is promoting happenstance their brand new cd available at retail outlets everywhere that sell fine rock and roll music and at fozzyrock.com i asked chris about his appearance on raw is war raw monday night raw whatever you call it these days whatever the kids are calling it he played with his band fozzy chris is a number two number three maybe even a number one heel in some people's eyes and what kind of a risk that is to go out there as a heel but yet try and promote your cd and get people to buy it so let's jump into the interview right now it is myself eric gorgillo interviewing chris jericho man it's not you guys <laughs> please don't feel so bad so it actually worked out great i was, I was very excited Okay, well, we're going to try and uh, straighten this up. This interview, my goodness, I swear, I must be possessed by the other heavy metal bands out there. I uh, wonder how that happened. I must be possessed by all the other heavy metal bands out there trying to kill this man's interview off of my radio show or maybe other radio shows. So we're going to, uh, we're going to fix it up momentarily. Uh, just a reminder that I'm going to be back on the road. It's looking like I'm going to be back on the road starting next week. I'll have more information on, on that on my website, prowrestlingradio.com. All right, let's try this again. Chris Jericho on Pro Wrestling Weekly. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> Please don't feel like uh, feel bad. So it actually worked out great. I was I was very excited about it. I thought it was awesome. It was funny because during the commercial break when the band went on stage, uh, people were chatting. Fozzy sucks. And I looked at the Vince and we were laughing. I was like, man, this is going to sell a lot of records. This is great. Right. That's very cool. It's very cool. Um, something that that you took a little bit of heat from on the internet. I know your favorite subject, the internet, is uh, right after your King of the Ring match with Rob Van Dam. You came out and you blasted the fans. I know you, you read some negative reviews of your match. Um, one was at PWTorch.com, because I actually read the, the same reviews after you posted that statement up. Um, it's a couple months later. Do you still stand by those remarks, or do you think you might have been a little too harsh? No, I, of course I stand by them. Because it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a one, one, you know, one incident remark. It was just a culmination of things. And um, it's like I said, there's people who, who inhibit the internet who are very negative and they don't like anything that anything that the company produces. Uh, if something is good, that's all right. If something is bad, well, then it was the worst thing ever. And there's never really any real credit given. And, and that match was just a catalyst for all that because that was a great match. I just watched it back in the day and I, for the first time and I thought it was awesome. And if you did like that match, it's your opinion. But there was, you know, it, it's almost like the internet is it, it, filled with people who are, are very... Uh, almost well, not holier than now but that's kind of a word for it where their opinions will be the last opinion that they read and uh, nobody wants to be the one that's, that's a mark that likes something that the other people don't like so nobody has their own opinions just everything kind of sucks so um, 
I, I, I made that statement. I agree with it. I still believe that. And to this day, I still don't really hang out too much on the internet on wrestling sites because of it, because it's just it's just too negative of a place, and uh, I don't really want to be a part of that sort of negativity. Yeah, I have no problems against opinions. I have no problems against criticism, but that's beyond criticism. That's just hating everything because you're because you you think that you know everything and you, you consider yourself to be above the average fan. It's just too smart to be fooled by the. Uh, the yeah, I totally agree. I think there's a lot of people out there that try and, and and at least show off that they think they're smart and that they're so smart and they know this and that. No matter what you do, you can go out there and have the match of your lifetime and they'll still pick it apart for something that isn't even relevant. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's very, um, like I said, just too cool for school type of thing, you know, and it's just like, well, I'm good, but so it's like, yeah, it was just awesome and as a fan, I enjoyed it. Everyone's like, well, I was a fan until nowadays. Everything's just very bad, and the show sucks, so therefore I'm now a judgmental fan and hates everything. And if that's the case, then why even bother watching wrestling? No, don't watch it. Watch something else. Watch TV Lakes. Right. That's, uh, that, it's pretty funny that, that you say that, because um, recently, over the last couple of weeks, I've had somewhat of a debate about that on my radio show where, where fans call in and, and they'll ask a question about, about a gossip rumor that they read or, or, or this and that. And, and I say to them, and and in the most polite way, why don't you just enjoy the show? What matters if this guy doesn't like that guy, or, or this guy doesn't like that guy? Just just enjoy the show and be a fan. But I, I guess it's a, a different time at a different era, and you know. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. But things I think we put a lot of stock in the internet and, and, and put too much stock into. It where there's maybe ten percent of the people that that care that much about wrestling to go on the internet and read what's going on, read the scuttle. But it's a very small segment of our overall fan base, and. Um, you know, it's also filled with a lot of 14 and 15 year old kids whose opinions have now been taken as that of, of the Lord, you know, where it's, right. well, you know, uh, so and so said that on, on PW Torch, so therefore, he must be right. Then you find out this guy's like a 20 year old college undergrad, you know, yeah. suddenly worked himself into a position of high influence for some reason within the confines of the internet. So, I mean, whatever, I mean, that's great. If you're on the internet and, you're, and, you, and you like reading about wrestling, that's, that's fine. But just for me, me personally, I just had enough of it. And, uh, I don't want to associate myself with that kind of negativity anymore. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, especially now that, that you've put out a, a brand new CD, how do you balance your schedule between promoting your band, which you obviously have to do, along with working out and traveling and wrestling and, and family time? Well, um, when uh, when Fozzie first put out Happenstance, you know, or it came out on July 30th, and uh, there's obviously a lot of promotion that was uh, involved when the record first came out. You know, for the both the month before until the month after, so it's kind of died down a bit now. Uh, the record is, is, is kind of gotten the publicity that it's got, and, and it's stood on its own. So it's been done a bit. Want to come out? Yeah, it's very, uh, it's a very tight schedule between wrestling and between fun and sport. It's me because I, I love playing in the band and I enjoy being in Fozzie, and uh, it's a whole brand new world for me to, to kind of create uh, something else from scratch. The same way I created the Chris Jericho character from scratch 12 years ago. So it was worth it. Uh, to to, to be doing that and it was a lot of fun to, to have our second record come out to get the kind of response for it that we did so uh, it was time well something that, something that I was very much believed in and I would do again uh, to sacrifice my time was a small sacrifice very cool very cool now the last time I had you on my radio show which was uh, back February 13th of 1999 and your contract was just about to expire with WCW and at the time I'd ask you to compare the bosses that you'd worked with at that at that time, uh, Eric Bischoff, Jim Cornette, and Paul Heyman, and you described Eric Bischoff as somewhat of a little girl at times, which I thought was a, a pretty funny comment. Um, and now you're working with him again on Raw as talent. Has he humbled since the demise of you? Is he the same? What's it like? Well, yeah, absolutely he has because he's not the boss anymore. Now he's just a talent, and he knows that. And uh, I mean, if looks could kill when he first came in, he would have been shot. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, he's, he's got to make a living just like anybody else does, and I think his character, for the most part, is a very strong character and very entertaining, so if he can help uh, create a buzz and make us all more money, then, then God bless him, more power to him, you know, and what's done is done. He was the boss, my boss before, he's not anymore, and, um, you know, whatever, no problem. Right, right. What, um, and now, now I've read about this, maybe this is true or maybe this is not true, but I recently read that you renewed your contract, is that true? Yeah. Yeah, I resigned my contract uh, for another three years about two weeks ago. Okay. What uh, what led to your decision to, to renew it? Was it just the, the lack of other opportunities, or, or are you just very happy with you are? What what goes into your decision-making? 
Well, one, I mean, there, there's always other places to go. I mean, I had other offers, another place I could have went to, but I like the WWE. I like working for Vince McMahon, and I, I enjoy doing what I do in, within the company. And uh, they they were very happy with all the work I've done the last three years, and they made it so that I didn't have to think about moving anywhere else. So uh, I, I really I've worked every, everywhere in the world. I've been everywhere in the world, and. I'd like to uh, continue my career and, and probably eventually end my career with the WWE because it's uh, it, it, it's been my favorite place to work. Right, right. Um, you know, I, I have to ask you this because um, I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I did. Uh, recent reports, again, maybe it's by people who don't know what they're talking about or maybe it is by people that do know what they're talking about, speak of the locker room in WWE these days not being as unified as it used to be a couple of years ago. Is it true? Uh, is it not true? Is it overblown? Well, I mean, I think the the, the uh, brand extension threw a lot of people for a loop because a lot of guys lost their traveling partners. A lot of guys lost their a lot of guys lost their you know, workout partners, and uh, a lot of the potential match combinations were split in two. And uh, I understand the reasoning for it. And hopefully, in the long run, it'll work out. But at the start, I didn't really uh, appreciate the brand extension because. We took a lot of guys that had great match chemistry and split them up for no apparent reason. So hopefully in the long run it will work out. And I think that's, man, hey, that was what caused a little bit of dissension in the ranks because a lot of people just didn't know what was going on. You know, a lot of people just didn't know where they stood and where the company stood. And uh, there wasn't a lot of communication uh, revolving around that. So, um, but I think, you know, in, in the long run, hopefully it will work out for the best and it will be create a lot more... Uh, a lot more rivalries and a lot more storylines that people can get into. Right, right. Uh, how would you have, um, uh, back, back a couple of months ago when you had your reign as undisputed champion, how, I know a lot of, at the time, a lot of your fans were, were disappointed, they, they thought you should have been promoted differently, uh, you know, and the, and the whatnot. Were you happy with the way that, that your run went, or would you like to have done it somewhat differently? Well, once again, it's people that were the same people that are saying, why isn't Chris Jericho the champion? He says I was the champion. Why isn't Chris Jericho promoted better? Blah, 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 blah. Right. I'm not happy with anything. What was I happy with? I was the first undisputed champion in the history of the business. Uh, and I'm the longest running. And now that there is no more, more undisputed champion, uh, I was the longest running undisputed champion as well. So, um, I mean, I don't think I could have been promoted much better. I mean, was I the focal part of the show all the time? No. But, I mean, just because you have the championship doesn't necessarily mean that. I mean, there's a certain amount of, of uh, I mean, that was my first title run. My second title run will be, will be more. The third title run will be more. I mean, look at Kurt Angle on his first title run. Sure. You know, it, there's uh, just the fact that I was the champion. I was in the main event of four pay-per-views in a row, uh, held the belt for four months. I mean, was it 100% the way I would have done it? No, but it was probably 80 to 90% the way that I liked it. So, um people that, that didn't like it, well, at least I still was the champion, and uh, they probably would not be happy with anything that happened as far as, as, far as, as I'm not happy. Well, I'm not sure it was Rock and St. Louis, so right. uh, uh, it, was, it wasn't weird. I mean, something that I, that I deserved and I could carry proudly, and I think I did a great job of being the champion with what I was given to do, so uh, it wasn't weird. Yeah, it just seemed like kind of kind of like a weird uh, weird twist of irony that here you are. And what I meant was back, um, and I should have been more clear when when you originally defeated the Rockport. Here you are, Chris Jericho, WCW champion in the WWE. I thought that was pretty ironic. Yeah, it was kind of weird when they were. You know, I mean, the whole invasion thing was was weird in my opinion. So yeah, uh, it's it something you never thought you'd see. Yeah, um, being that. Uh, uh, it's a lot of the members in Fozzie, I don't know, are all of them or, or a lot of them uh, members of Stuck Mojo? Um, three of them were in Stuck Mojo and they're now in another band uh, by the name of Six Speed. Uh, so, th yeah, there's three of them that are in there with Fozzie. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to ask you, I, I guess it kind of makes that question moot. I thought they were still in Stuck Mojo. Um, are they committed to Fozzie as, as their main focal, their main focus or... Well, their to them, Fozzie is the same as to me. It's, it's, it's our side project that we really right. love playing in, we love doing it. They have their main their main band they're working on, and obviously I have my day job in the WWE, but uh, we both love playing in Fozzie, and we're both very excited about the uh, you know the success that we've received, received with the first record and with Happenstance and with the band overall. Yeah, absolutely. Um, will you or, or have you had any kind of an extensive live tour to promote the album? No, we haven't really had a chance to tour too much. We play usually about maybe one show a month or shows a month on average just because uh, it's just very hard to find the time for, for the both of us to be able to, you know, for the two different factions to be able to 
to get together to play. I mean, we'd love to. Hopefully on the next record, I'd love to do a little bit more of a tour, maybe a one-month tour or something along those lines, take a little time off from, from wrestling, actually focus it on Fozzy, but uh, for this time, we just didn't have a chance to do that. Yeah. Um, you, you and I are about the same age, so so we grew up in that whole era of uh, Hulkamania as, as wrestling fans. What was it like to be able to, to work several matches with Hulk Hogan? It was great. I really enjoyed it. Not only working several matches with Hogan, but getting some really good matches with Hulk and then also uh, having him, uh, you know, getting the trust from him to know that, you know, I, mean, I could put, I would put together the matches, call them in the ring and, and basically uh, uh, dictate the pace and the tempo of the matches and, and knowing, you know, that, that, you know, Hulk trusted me enough to do that and also the results turning out as good as they did. It, it was great to be able to do that, to be in the ring with somebody that I really respected as all right, that is Chris Jericho, and a lot more to come as he talks about the NWO. We kind of play a little game where I, I throw two names or two objects at him, and he has to pick one, and it's up to him if he can expand on it. And I get a little creative with it. We go into the wrestling genre as well as rock and roll music, which he knows a whole lot about. Again, you are listening to the interview exclusively here on Pro Wrestling Weekly Radio with the former undisputed champion of the world, the first ever and the first ever guest of this radio program on February the 13th, 1999. Where has the time gone, Chris Jericho? Well, we'll pick up where we left off when we come back from the break. My name is Eric Ordrulo, and you're listening to the show in two places. One, on the internet through my website, WBC, or excuse me, my website, ProWrestlingRadio.com, and WBCB's website, WBCB1490.com. It'll be air, 1490 AM, WBCB. Paid for by Rendell for Governor. Another negative commercial from Mike Fisher, and another distortion. The facts? As a mayor, Ed Rendell increased funding for senior centers. Rendell cut energy costs for the elderly. And Ed Rendell actually froze property tax rates for eligible seniors. As governor, Rendell wants to broaden prescription drug coverage. And Rendell's plan has been called the most comprehensive ever. Mike Fisher's record is a different matter. Fisher voted to cut heating assistance for seniors. And in a vote that he still hasn't fully explained, Mike Fisher voted to cut health care benefits 55 who've been laid off. Even if the layoff... ...and then also to be able to make him look like a million bucks uh, as a professional, was, it, was, it was very cool. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you think, uh, and again, I guess it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier, um, it's, a, it's a whole new generation of wrestling fans out there, especially the ones that you perform live in front of, where as, as maybe something didn't go as planned today, and you'll hear, uh, you know, a, a few hundred fans chanting about it, whereas in the past, nobody, nobody would really know the difference. Is it frustrating sometimes when you perform in, fr in front of some of these crowds and the fans are, are more there to, to put themselves over than to actually enjoy the shows? Well, because they can't put themselves over unless I allow them to. I call the tempo. I'm in charge. Uh, the match goes the way I want it to go, and, and the crowd does what I want them to do. So even if guys are trying to put themselves over, unless I allow that to happen, it doesn't happen. Because I'm in charge of everything when I'm in the ring. Right. right. The people in the crowd realize it or not. Right, right. Eric Ordulo with WBCB, and I'm talking with WWE Intercontinental Champion Chris Jericho, uh, a guy who I think that you've had tremendous chemistry with over the last several months, Triple H. Uh, what's it like being in there with him? Do you, do you think that he has a, a bad reputation, an unjust reputation uh, amongst what, what's printed about him? Uh, and what's it like, again, working with him? Because, again, it seems to me that you guys have tremendous chemistry together. Yeah, I mean, over the years, there's been a lot of history in the ring and outside the ring, obviously, and right. uh, there's definitely been a, a mutual respect developed on a professional level. And I mean, it, whether it's unjust, whether it's bad, I mean, the point is the guy uh, is a very good performer in the ring, and you know, of course, he's going to have a lot of heat because he is dating the boss's daughter. You know, and uh, whether he's used that to his advantage, or not, I'm not sure. Uh, but like I said, on, on a professional level, there's definitely uh, some, there's definitely a respect there that. Uh, grown over the last three, four years because of all that we've been through uh, with each other, you know, both, like I said, at, at peace and at, and at war, so, um, you know, he's going to continue to do what he does, and he has a lot of people that probably disagree with his methods because of the fact he's dating Stephanie, but, you know, whatever, I mean, that's just, that's part of life, sometimes you think people, you know, people are attracted to each other, and there's nothing that anybody can do about it, so, uh, whether people respect that or don't respect it, it doesn't affect me. And uh, on a professional level, there's always going to be that chemistry there. Sure, sure. Um, 
pretty interesting that a couple of months ago, and we were talking a little bit about this um, with Eric Bischoff, that out of the blue, Hogan, Nash, and Hall come back to the WWE, and, and here you are once again several years later sharing a locker room with these guys, and you talked a little bit about them the last time you were on my show and, and, and about the politics that were in WCW, and it was you pretty much tip the hat that, that you would be leaving at that time. Were things any different with them when they came in? Were, were some of them the same? Did some change? How, how did that play out? Well, absolutely it was different because they weren't ruling the roost anymore. Uh, I think the NWO idea was, was doing for the moment they came in because they had no steam on them anymore. There were three old guys that didn't really do anything. Um, Hogan turned out to be the best signing out of all three of those because he actually was a legend who still remembered how to be a legend. Uh, Paul obviously was gone before he could bat an eye, and Nash got hurt twice in, in, you know, in two or three matches. So uh, in retrospect, not really a great signing from Vince, but I don't think uh, uh, Vince really expected to be. I think he did it to see what happened, and what happened happened. So uh, it wasn't the same as those before, because they, those guys couldn't call the same shots they did before because times had changed. So... Um, uh, but like I said, it was cool and I just like Hogan back on board and the other two guys while well, they did what they did and that was about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, recently, with the WWE, you returned to Japan where you wrestled quite extensively throughout your career. Did you alter your style of, of the match with Rock over there at all because you were in a, a completely different environment or did you bring the total WWE brand style and Chris Jericho to the fans that you have been bringing in the United States? Uh, that's why I brought the WWE Jericho because that's what people were there to see. They were there to be American fans, and if you were there, you would have you would have been uh, mystified by how they reacted, how the, how they were. I mean, they were like American fans. They brought their signs. They were chanting. They were booing. They were cheering. Wow. It was the loudest Japanese crowd I've ever been in front of because they were there to be American fans. So, uh, and that's working with the Rock. He's my favorite guy to work with, and uh, we always have great matches, anyways. Japanese style with tons of false finishes. And, you know, lots of ups and downs and stuff like that. So it was great for me to go back to Japan as the uh, world champion, uh, which has that extra meeting in Japan as well, and to face The Rock, you know, my favorite uh, opponent to work against. So it was a lot of fun. It was one of the best uh, tours of my life. Very cool, very cool. What has been, um, and I don't know if it's one, maybe it's several, what have been some of your more memorable matches for you as a professional and, and, and just you as a person that you've had in the WWE over the last several years? Well, I mean, I think the uh, Benoit Jericho ladder match was great. I think the, the uh, TLC3 with Benoit Jericho, Hardy, Dudley, ENC was an awesome match. It's been forgotten over the course of the time. Very true. I, I think uh, Triple H Jericho, Last Man Standing, was great. I think uh, the Rock Jericho uh, WWE title match from No Mercy last year was awesome. I think the Rock Jericho Royal Rumble match from this year was awesome. Uh, Jericho Triple H Hell in the from this year, Jericho Van Dam, uh, King of the Ring, great. So there's been a whole bunch of, of classic matches. You know, Jericho Edge Cage match from SmackDown this year. I mean, those are just the ones coming off the top of my head that I really enjoyed. And um, there's been so many of them that have turned out really, really good. So it's great to be uh, be able to have a body of work that consists of all those tremendous matches. Awesome. Also, speaking of that Hell in the Cell match, how did uh, how did you prepare for something like that? Did you watch the tapes of the previous Hell in the Cell matches, or did you just go in there and ju just try and do your own thing? How did you prepare for something like that? Well, I, I watched the other Hell in the Cell matches, and I was also trying to figure out a way to have a, a great Hell in the Cell match without somebody having to fall off the top of the cage. Yeah. Um, because it's not really... A, uh, my style, I didn't really feel comfortable with that. And B, more importantly of all, I wanted to to lower the bar, so to speak, to show people in the future that if you want to have a Hell in a Cell match, somebody doesn't have to fall off the top. Very true. Uh, and, and my way to deal with that was by doing the finish on the top, which I think turned out great. I uh, I really enjoyed that match. It was really cool. So um, now, like I said, in the future, somebody doesn't have to... You, when, when you book one of those matches, you know somebody doesn't have to fall off and risk their life. Because that's not what wrestling's about. It's about telling a story and... Uh, and, and capturing the fans' imagination. It's not about putting your life in danger by uh, falling off a 25-foot ledge. No, not, a, not at all. As a matter of fact, I find those matches kind of hard to watch. I'm, uh, I'm sitting there watching, and, you know, anything could go wrong when, when, when you're that high in the air, and, you know, it's just, it's just not what it's about. Absolutely, that's not, yeah, that's not what the wrestling's all about. Yeah. Um, how tough was it a couple of years ago when you first started with the WWF at the time? How hard was it at that time adjusting from life and wrestling in WCW to the WWF? 
Well, there's a lot of style differences. You know, anywhere you go, uh, when you go somewhere new, you have to adjust the style. You know, if you go to Mexico, they've got a different way of doing things. Japan does. ECW did. WCW did. And WWF did. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just a matter of taking a good six months to adjust the style and uh, just to adjust to the way things were, you know, both in the ring and outside the ring. Right. Right. How um. Uh, how hard was it at WrestleMania for, for you and Triple H to follow the, the Hogan Rock match? Well, it was tough, obviously, because yeah. um, it's like trying to follow Tyson versus Ali, you know, those two sure. legendary guys, and uh, the people, I don't think anybody could have predicted the reaction they had in the ring. People went absolutely bananas for it, you know, but uh, I think anybody on that card uh, would be lying if they said they didn't wish they were in the last match fighting for the, uh, for the championship, so... Uh, it was tough to follow, but uh, I think if any match had a chance to follow it, it was ours, and uh, I, I enjoyed the match. For, you know, I thought it was it was it was cool, and uh, you know, obviously, like you said, you know, Hogan and Rock, man. I mean, you can't compete with that as far as just the legendary status of the match. Uh, uh, technically, our match was a million times better than theirs, and, and emotional wise, they obviously had more invested in their match. So it was uh, six to one half dozen of another. Right, right, right. Uh, especially nowadays, uh, since, since you've accomplished so much storyline-wise, and I'm sure professionally and personally as well, in your wrestling career, what motivates you nowadays? Well, just to uh, entertain the fans, and, and uh, still my motivation is the same as it's always been to be the most entertaining guy on the show. And uh, now, obviously, too, I'd like to help some of the younger guys uh, so that when my time in the business is done, we have some new stars because we need that right now. We need an influx of new talent, and we need some guys that can teach these guys because they've never learned in Japan or in Mexico or in Smoky Mountain or ECW like I did. Right. Coming basically right into a development of a contract and going right on TV. So they need to get taught some experience. And uh, that's basically my motivation now. And obviously the motivation to become the, the world champion once again. Sure, sure. What, uh, going back to music a little bit, and, and I, I'm sure you're a big fan of, fan of the he MTV Headbangers Ball. Yes. Yes. What was your favorite MTV Headbangers Ball moment? Well, I'm from Canada, so we never really got the uh, Headbangers Ball on oh. TV, you know, so uh, just from watching in the past. Um, I liked it when Guns N' Roses destroyed the set. That was pretty cool. I saw that, you know, in retrospect. That was kind of neat. Yes. Uh, just the fact that they had some heavy metal on MTV was probably my favorite moment because you rarely see that anymore, if ever. Which is cool because with uh, MTV likes Fozzy for, for whatever reasons they have and... Uh, they were telling us we've been discussing doing a video, and they said, you know, if, if we like the concept of your video, we'll be happy to uh, to play it. So we've been trying to figure out what kind of a concept would MTV like. So yeah. they're very fickle. You know, they call the shots. They're booking the entire music industry. So uh, we have to try and impress the booker, so to speak. And then, right. So we're working on a few concepts right now to try and do a video for the uh, Fonzie for the Habitat's record to continue with the, uh, the record success. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you know, I, I was a big metal fan growing up and still am do you think that the the metal music can be successful be played on radio today or do you think it's kind of um something that that would have to have a cult following i think uh kids kids especially uh are always into aggressive music and heavy music because it kind of fits what growing up is all about so uh i don't think you'll ever see the um the heavy metal from the 1980s return as big as it was but i think you always have people that are into hard rock and heavy music and, you know, kind of the pounding guitars and the great riffs. And yeah. I, I think you'll see a return of the guitar solo, the return of the guitar melodies and harmonies. Because we're missing that nowadays, but, uh, you know, that's a very important part of, of, of music and for some reason, somebody decided that guitar solos weren't cool anymore, but Fozzie is going to prove that they are cool and bring it back. Very cool. Very cool. And I don't know if you catch it or not, what did you think of Axl Rose's performance at the Music Awards? All right, we're back here live on Pro Wrestling Weekly Radio. And again, you're listening to an interview I conducted about two and a half weeks ago with the WWE superstar Chris Jericho. You can see every Monday night on TNN at 9 p.m. You could also catch his newest CD, Happenstance, Fozzie's Happenstance, in music stores everywhere that sell fine rock and roll music. Also, FozzieRock.com is a website that gives you all of the up-to-date information on the band, ChrisJericho.com, although he's not so much involved with it anymore. That is a website devoted completely to ChrisJericho.com, devoted to Chris Jericho, excuse me. Also, I received about uh, 10 or 11 
promotional copies of CDs from Megaforce Records, who does Chris's uh, Fozzy CD. It's not the actual Fozzy CD, but it's a sampler of other bands, including two or three Fozzy songs on it. So when I do go back live on location, which is looking like it's going to be next week, I will have them out there to give away. And uh, I have quite a few of them, so I have a pretty good shot at getting them. So if, if, uh, if Fozzy is one of those bands that you heard on Raw, and you're not too sure whether you want to buy their music or not, you're not too sure whether you want to check them out, this is a real good opportunity to do so, because it's free. And if you don't like it, what do you have to lose? Maybe you'll hear another band on the CD that you find a little bit better than Fozzy, or maybe not. But regardless of that, they will be available to you, the fans and listeners out there, when I do head back on the road, which looks like it's going to be starting next Saturday. I also talked to Rap Boy in the middle of the interview, and Rap Boy has confirmed his appearance for October the 26th for the weigh-in and November the 2nd. And, of course, Z-Bar confirmed his appearance a long time ago on those dates. We actually showed up those dates last night. Although he's a little upset that I'm getting him out of bed early on our Dover, Delaware show. But he's still going to do it, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And that is going to happen on October the 26th at the weigh-in, November 2nd. We're going to have a, a, a lot of different people out there. We're going to make this a lot of fun, and uh, it should be a real, real good time. Also, Combat Zone Wrestling returns to live action tonight at Viking Hall with Justice Payne and Nick Gage, two out of three falls, Trent Acid, and M-Dog 20. It is Beyond the Barrier. It is Combat Zone Wrestling. CZWWrestling.com is where you can get all the latest information on gorgeous ladies of outrageous wrestling. And again, you can catch their show every Wednesday night. Combat Zone Wrestling airs every Thursday at midnight. Both programs air on WGTW 48. And again, if this interview does wrap up in enough time and you'd like to call with anything you have on your mind, feel free to do so at 888-922-2149 or locally at 215-949-3232. And I just got in the mail here today at the radio station, Roddy Piper's autobiography. And I started reading it a little bit before I went on the air. And so far, so good. I was reading a little bit about his Portland error. And it's very cool, very cool stuff. And I'm trying to work it out to get him on the show. The problem is that I'm expected to go live on location next week for an indefinite amount of time. And I, I, I like to do these interviews, especially after I had Tom Zank on the show a year and a half ago. Almost got me thrown off of WBCB and has gotten other people thrown off of the air on other shows that he has done. I like to do them pre-taped so I can edit them down. Uh, you know, rather than have, having these guests on live. So I'm trying to work that out. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to work out. I, I, I think it's kind of pointless to have a taped interview on when I'm out on location, but we'll see what we can do. He is there, and will I do it? It's just a matter of uh, the semantics of putting it all up. Anyway, without further ado, we're going to take a break now. You're listening to this radio show in two places. One, on the internet, there's reunion on the MTV Music Awards. So let's go back to the interview now with former Undisputed World Heavyweight Champion, Chris Jericho. Um, well, it was cool to see them back on stage, um, see Axel back on stage, and then once you actually saw the band, it was kind of like, eh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And his performance wasn't top-notch either, but, uh, hey, a world with Guns N' Roses is a lot better than a world without Guns N' Roses, so I just hope they can get their act together and get back on the road again and uh, give us some new tunes. Now, then I'll be able to judge, because it, it's hard to judge a band just by watching them play on TV. Uh, for you know, one song or two songs, so we'll see what happens when they when they make their big return. Definitely. Well, as a matter of fact, yesterday they just announced a Philly date, so I'm assuming they're they're back on a full fledged tour coming up. Oh really? What's yeah. Philly date? Uh, December six. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, so that's I'm cool. as, I'm assuming that they're uh, they're at least going to give it a shot. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, like I said, so yeah. Maybe they need uh, maybe they need the Fozzie to open up for them and really get their get their uh, act together. Well, you know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was going to ask you, have you had that chance um, over, over the last couple of years that you've had Fozzie going? Because I know there's there's a lot of wrestling fans in the metal business. Have you had the chance to, to play with, with any of the other um, bands that, that you enjoyed listening to, either growing up or now? I haven't had a chance really to play with them, but, I mean, there's a lot of bands who are, are fans of Fozzie, and I've, I've made friends with them because of that. I mean, Zach Wilde from Ozzy and the guys from Dream Theater, a couple of guys from the Chili Peppers, and, uh, you know, Adrian Smith and Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden, uh, so there's a lot of guys who are into the whole concept of Fozzie, and they're all great guys as well. So um, that's been that's been kind of a bonus. Very cool. Very cool. So, all right. yeah, man. yeah. All right. What I'm going to do here is I have a couple of different choices to give you. I'm going to give you an A and a B, and 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 you choose one or the other. Whether it's it's for whatever reasons you want to keep to yourself or you want to expound on it, it's totally cool. Uh, some music, some wrestling, and I believe yeah, some music and wrestling. That's what I got here. Okay. So the first question I got: Kiss. Revenge or Kiss Psycho Circus? 
revenge by all the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, this question is in their primes. I'm not talking now. In their primes. Missy Hyatt or Lita Ford? Lita Ford. <laughs> David Lee Roth or Sammy Hagar? David Lee Roth, Daddy O, Diamond Dave. Definitely, definitely. Did you catch any of their shows that they had out there? No, it's the one tour I never got to see this summer, and I'm hot about it. I wanted to check it out, but I never had the chance. Yeah, yeah me too. Maybe they'll do another one next year. <laughs> I don't know. All right. <laughs> Kevin Nash or Scott Hall? Scott Hall. Scott Hall, interesting. Huge hey, illusion. Man, Kevin Nash couldn't have had the ladder match with Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania. Very true, very true. But he did beat up Shawn Michaels with the prosthetic leg of Mad Dog Vashon. Yeah, but, you know, come on, man. <laughs> use your illusion one or use your illusion two. Which one is the one? Is that the blue one? The one is the orange. I like two, then, the blue one. Okay. It's got a on it. It's a great song. Very cool. As a tag team partner, Lance Storm or Chris Benoit? Um, I'd probably say, I'd say that's, that's pretty close. That's a pretty close call. I'd say maybe Lance Storm. We had more flashy moves. We were, like, kind of a... Uh, early 90s rockers type thing uh, and Benoit obviously is, is the best worker so it's, it's hard I'd say a tie between the two if I could be lame on that one definitely uh, not, not to break away from the game here but speaking of rockers what do you think of Shawn Michaels match at SummerSlam oh it's tremendous man I'm yeah. the biggest Shawn Michaels fan ever so uh, I thought it was great yeah absolutely I thought I thought it was tremendous as well um, Ricky Rackman or Adam Curry uh, Ricky Rockman. Ricky Rockman. Hey, how weird was it that he wound up getting a job with WCW? I know, it's pretty funny, man. Yeah. yeah. And then, finally, and uh, maybe you answered it earlier, maybe you didn't. Raw or SmackDown? Um, I gotta go with SmackDown right now, man. They got they got uh, a better crew of guys, and uh, Raw just can't find his niche, so hopefully we'll be able to find it soon. I was pissed when they moved him from SmackDown to Raw, but... Uh, you know, that's, that's part of the, the business. I work for Vince. That's where he told me to go, so that's what I do. So Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think the Eric Bischoff um, character brings a whole new dynamic to Ron. It's weird because sometimes you guys all have a real killer week, and then sometimes it just seems like you can't get well, your groove the next week. That's what I mean. SmackDown is more consistent. Raw, I think, sometimes is a better show, but it, it goes up and down. So uh, it all depends. Right, absolutely. And in wrapping up, uh, is, is the Posse CD available at, at all the music stores everywhere? Everywhere, yeah, you can get the Fozzie anywhere fine rock and roll is sold. So uh, I was just in Best Buy yesterday, and I saw they had a few in there. So you can get them anywhere, man. Very cool. And, and the album rocks. If you like rock and roll, you should check it out because it's really kick-ass. Oh, definitely. Do you guys have a website? Does Fozzie have a website? Yeah, FozzieRock.com. Very cool. And, of course, ChrisJericho.com. That's still up and running? That's still up and running, man. Not, uh, not a lot of influence from me, but it's still... <laughs> Yeah, I, I understand. Well, listen, Chris, I know you're very busy and uh, very cool to talk to you, especially three and a half years later, you know? Very cool, man. Yeah, it's great, man. Yeah, yeah let's... You should uh, uh, give the Sunday night on TNN at 9 p.m. on the Raw brand. Chris, thank you very much, and the best of luck to you in, in your wrestling career and music career and just in life in the future. Thank you. And remember, I am the king of the world, and Fozzie are huge rock stars. Very cool. Thank you very much, Chris. All right, dude. Take yeah. care. All right, that's it. Well, there you go. We finally got it out. Two and a half weeks later, we finally get the thing going. And uh, I hope that, that you all enjoyed it out there. I enjoyed doing the interview. I think that he was very open and honest about a lot of the things that, that I asked him about. The interview will be up and transcribed in full. I'm going to offer it first to OneWrestling.com, and they're always very gracious about throwing up the interviews, and uh, they'll probably have it up there for about a week, and then after so, I will put it up on my website where you can find it for the rest of your life. And again, uh, the original interview that I conducted with Chris Jericho on February the 13th, 1999, is also up on my website right now at ProWrestlingRadio.com slash Jericho.htm. And, uh, or you can just go to the website, ProWrestlingRadio.com, and bring up the interviews list. If you like that interview, and maybe you're a little new to the show and haven't heard me, or maybe you've only been listening for a year or so during a period of time where I haven't, I haven't conducted a lot of interviews, you can find a, a ton of interviews on my website, ProWrestlingRadio.com. I've had Terry Funk on the show before. I've had Bret Hart on the show before. I've had Ricky Steamboat on the show before. Now Chris Jericho for a second time. I have had a ton of uh, some, some of the best wrestlers, some of the wrestlers that I enjoyed 
growing up as a fan, watching some of the most controversial wrestlers, Shane Douglas. Yes, even Shane Douglas has been on the show before. And one of the best interviews, um, maybe my favorite of all time, was the Shane one. It was just a very cool interview, and uh, it came at a good time. I, I usually am able to get these guys at a real good time when either they're, they're angry with their employer or they're angry with somebody else. And they always make for some great interviews. And Tom Zank, the Tom Zank Chronicles, uh, you can find them on my website, also in the interviews section. Um, Tom is just crazy and goes off on everybody. And uh, I'm definitely going to have Tom back on sometime in the future. I still talk to Tom every now and then. And uh, he's just as crazy as he was the first time I had him on here about a year and a half, two years ago. So, um it's always a lot of fun talking to Tom Zang. Speaking of crazy, and speaking of wacky, Rat Boy and Z Bar, the first annual Pro Wrestling Weekly Arm Wrestling Challenge, Combat Zone Wrestling Superstar Z Bar, who has promised to bring along his boss Lobo to the big event. So Lobo is scheduled to be in attendance when he takes on the Rat Boy in an arm wrestling matchup. Now, I'm telling you, there's about a 120-pound difference here between both competitors, but Rat Boy is telling me he's got a lot of heart. Rat Boy is telling me that he's done a lot of training, and he is prepared for Z-Bar. Z-Bar, on the other hand, I don't know how prepared he is for the Rat Boy. I think he's going into this too confident, maybe overconfident, but uh, who knows? We'll have to see what happens on that one. We have a call coming through, but you know what? Um, I don't I don't think we're going to be able to take uh, any calls because... We're not going to be able to take any calls. Any rap boy, I'm going to have to ask you to call back next week or, or uh, come out to the show next week because we're wrapping up here on the air, and I thought I'd have more time. But again, uh, rap boy and Z-Bar, the Arm Wrestling Challenge, on November the 2nd. That is the tentative date. It looks like that is where we're going to go with this. October the 26th, the official weigh-in. Bill Melody, how much do you think rap boy is going to weigh in at, huh? 11 pounds. 11 pounds. You may not be that far off. Let me tell you. You may not be that far off. But uh, he will be weighing in, and we're going to do that live on location. Go to my website again, ProWrestlingRadio.com. This coming Monday, where I will have the official announcement on my new location. Uh, from what they're telling me here, the brass at WBCB are telling me that this is going to be a permanent location for an indefinite definite amount of time. Easy for me to say. And I imagine that I'll probably be there throughout the holidays. So that's always a lot of fun. Um, we did over at the I-95 Marketplace. We did some shows over there throughout the holiday season about two, two and a half years ago. And they were a blast because we had a ton of people coming out there. There was always a ton of traffic coming through. People always stopping by. And uh, it was just a lot of fun. So it's, it's a real good time. Although it wasn't so much fun being stuck out in the middle of winter during the holiday season at the tree farm a year and a half ago. But uh, other than that, it's usually <laughs> always a good time being out there for the holiday season as long as it's indoors. That's uh, that's the key. Uh, I want to thank Bill Melody for uh, for making things happen on this end here. He's going to follow up the football game, which starts immediately at 1 o'clock. That's high school football, Calvary Christian Academy versus Bristol Borough. And we're going to uh, have the Panapresso brothers on commentary for that game there. And then following that game, Bill will follow it up until 6 o'clock with the best country music for you in the business right here exclusively on WBCB. And he returns tomorrow with more of the same from 6 to 10 a.m. I want to thank the people at Megaforce Records for helping me put that interview together with Chris Jericho. Unfortunately, I don't have